Rosedale and Communities Trust National League softball final here at Rosedale Park on, in Albany on the North Shore. We'll see Wellington taking on Canterbury in the final and uh, joining me in the commentary this afternoon, uh, former junior Black Sox. Well, they weren't the Black Sox back then, were they? Shane Howarth, who uh, jack of all trades in the commentary game. Yeah, I'll try to stay away from rucks and malls during the, during the commentary, Mike, but yeah. Kirsten, great drive out to right centre field. And first hit of the game, so Canterbury straight away get their lead-off runner on base. That's what they'll be looking for. Couldn't have asked for a better start there, Mike. Put your first runner on base, bring up your top hitters, and, and Canterbury certainly having a fantastic batting average, one through to five, and nobody's under 350 batting there, so a very, very good start for Canterbury. And the stolen base. Oh, all safe. Well, you have to think that was a hit and run play, play. and, and Malcolm has left it. Three, Wee bit of hesitation. Three. I don't think the runner actually realised. She thought it was a hit and run and thought, oh, I'm in a bit of trouble here, but it wasn't a great throw. Full count. We're hitting the, down the second base and the out taken across at first, but uh, she's done a job. She's got first and round to third, and now they'll have two shots at scoring her from there. He puts down the bunt, runs coming home, scores. We've got one run in the game, Canterbury. Jump it out to a 1-0 lead. Wellington now going to have to do, and really do some hard work. Very, very smart play from your number three bat batter. You expect them to hit away, that's it. But I think we're looking at a hit and run here, and a very smart play from Canterbury. Wellington weren't expecting it at all, and Iosa all ended up going between her legs, but you don't expect that from your number three batter. All caught out of second base. She went for the steal. Canterbury really putting the heat on. They want to advance the runners. Yeah, you're, you're right there, Mike. They're, they're putting the heat on. They're, they're aggressive. They're aggressive base running. They're getting them there. And Terry Shaw this time threw a lovely ball to good pitch from Sheree Cartwright. She'll get that down and outside. And knowing that maybe Jennifer Neal will be going for the running bunch. She's just kept it away from her, out of the strike zone. Two balls and a strike. Up down the little bunt. Oh, Cartwright makes a good play, but uh, oh, too quick, too quick, Jennifer Neal. She gets down to first base. So the ball into the glove. Oh, a lovely change up. Well, that's a fantastic start from Sheree Cartwright because Jennifer Neal probably shouldn't have been on base from a good bit of athleticism from Sheree Cartwright to get her out, but. Two beautiful change-ups to, to get out Brunton and Lottie there. And on, Concedes the hit. Great hit, Pohaga. Keeps that batting average just rolling right on along. Once again, Mike, we've got the first batter on. So now the pressure's back on the Wellington fielders. And that was a lovely hit. She just waited patiently, a couple of bunts, waited for a couple of pitches, and then... I mean, that was a rocket. Got oh, two outs and they drop the bunt. And take the out, Kerry Shaw. Great work to catch her. She got out of the box pretty quickly. Picked it up and uh, made the throw across to first base to retire the Canterbury side. With Canterbury leading 1-0, they've had their second turn at bat. So Tali Tonu'u puts down the bunt. Cartwright feels it. Not a lot of options. They couldn't look for the double play. They couldn't take the lead runner, so she just took the easy out down on the first base. And she's going to come home and score the run. So it's a tight ball game. Oh, the pass ball. Cartwright, I wouldn't call it a wild pitch. It wasn't the easiest one in the world, perhaps, to catch, but uh, just having a look here. It just goes away and just goes under the glove. Catch a hewer. Attempted bunt, easy catch, Kerry Short. And very quick innings. Canterbury's third turn at bat will come to an end. So he puts the ball into play. Jennifer Neal. Oh, just a dribbly little hit into right field. Bobbled and bobbled and got there though. Fires it into the center field. But the catch is taken. No problems at all. 
Mel Hume. So innings all over. They're going through them quickly now. Both pitchers will be happy. They're going to have to come pretty close to the strike zone this time. And that's what happens when you do. And Pawaka. She stretches the base hit. A little fumble out in center field enables Pawaka to just stretch it into an easy double. It's a fantastic at bat for Sharp Pawaka. She waited for the pitch. Iosa didn't want to come at her early on and then had to come two balls down. And Sharp Pawaka waited on, waited on it, and then showed good speed to get to second base. But very good at bat for Sharp Pawaka. Pitch go this time. Oh. Into the zone. And the hit to uh, short center field. So. Runner in, and Kerry Hanning will now look to do the business for Canterbury. He hits into left field, catches taken, runner holds, and they score the run, Canterbury. So Hanning did a job. Good sacrifice by from Kerry Hanning here. What happened here? Went to the left field. Sharp walk from a third base, has to hold up now, waits for the catch, and it's deep enough to hit from Hanning to allow Pawaka to get home. The tag is, she just has to wait till the ball goes in the glove, then she can go on a lovely sacrifice by from Gary Hanning. Runners on first and second. She's done the business. Great hit, great hit. Play coming at home, it'll be easy. So that's four for Canterbury now. Four to one, and now Naomi Iosa starting to feel a sting of the Red Hawks bats. Well, Tia Fenahua there Mine's did the out. perfect job. Two strikes on it. She just waited for this pitch and then a lovely hit. Probably in the perfect area when you've got runners on first and second. And Pawaka was through pretty easy, but very good running from Adriana Duncan there. You see it here. They know it's in the hole and they're gone. Pawaka was the easy run. And Duncan made up great ground from first base to get round and, and get home. And get home pretty easily in the end. Yeah, Sheree Cartwright. Bang. Pawaka stretching at the three. Easy work. And Cartwright. He turns it into a stand-up double. So excellent, excellent work from the Canterbury side. It's a Pawaka Cartwright show, isn't it? What a fantastic hit. Lisa Such put it there to be hit, and it was hit from Sheree Cartwright. And Blessing Wellington have is it's two down, but great base running from Puaka. She's putting pressure, everything she does here, determination, head down, she's going to get the third and, and put pressure on, on fielders when you, when you run like that. And the error made, it's going to score one, and it's going to score two. So, goodness, goodness me, it's uh, the error made by uh, Stone O'Kane. She's fielded brilliantly in this game. And that one just got away from her a little bit. And it's going to drop in, so Stone okay. Well, the coach will be happy. That's what she needs to do. She needs to be on first base. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't the biggest of hits, but it dropped in the area and it's something Wellington definitely needed. Some of the luck hasn't gone their way, and up he's done okay. Just put it in the area that neither the infield nor the outfield could get to, so it's exactly what Wellington needed. Wellington, and that's great work, Wellington. Jennifer Nell, she puts the ball down on the plate. A little fumble from Cartwright, but it loads the bases up, so it loads them up with just one out, so Wellington back in the game. Yeah, we saw a great bit of reflex from Cherie Cartwright in the other innings, but Jennifer Neal hit this too well. And another error made. No, she must have just kicked it across to second base or did she glove it across? My view was blocked. I I think if you talk to Lisa Kurt, she'll say that's deliberate, but I think it's it's a wee bit of luck. It's lucky that the base, you obviously got the bases loaded, so <laughs> didn't mean to do it. It's very, very, very good work from Sharp Pawaka there to, to pick the ball up. Fumble, throw across, 
called out. Well, Kirsten, she cut the out. She made hard work of it, but she got it. Runners on second and third. Hume. Back to the pitch as such. And they score the run, Canterbury. Runners called safe at first. Great hustle from Mal Holm to get up there. Um, it was a lovely running bunt. And as I say with left-handers, they have the, the advantage of on the go now. She's already running, and this is such that little fumble cost them. And scored another runner. Canterbury had seven. See that Hua was home. And Third base, Tonu, and she fires it across the first base. No worries at all. They take the out, Wellington. They retire the Canterbury side. But uh, Canterbury will be happy. They've scored another run in that innings. And we'll go for the play. That will complete the top half of the sixth innings with the Red Hawks in front by 7 to 2. She has the two strikes. And that's a nice little hit to short centre field. And that moves them. Moves Lottie down to second base, so no out, and Wellington have runners on uh, one and two. Pick up, pick herself up a base hit here. We'll certainly make it a bit more interesting. There she does. Lottie's going to come around. She's going to score at the plate. And advance them, everyone. Stevenson does the work. She gets the RBI. And Tonutu goes down to second base. Wellington score a run. Yeah, lovely hitting from Wellington. They're, they're putting it, just making sure they get back to the ball and finding the gaps. And Lottie showed good, good speed to get round from second base to score there. And still, Canary. They've got to be careful now. Two runners on, none out. Still. Sherry um, Cartwright does the business and gets rid of Kylie Smith. So good work from the pitcher. She's fielded brilliantly. She's hit well, and she's pitching like there's no tomorrow. So, the Canterbury Red Hawks will come in to their seventh turn at bat, leading by seven runs to three. That's right. One out away from securing their championship for the Canterbury Red Hawks. And she's going to do it all herself. She takes the out, across to first base, and the Canterbury side will win the New Zealand Community Trust National League, beating Wellington in the final by seven runs to three. Yeah, thanks, Mike and Shree Cartwright. How does it feel? Oh, it's awesome, really. You know, what can you say? Pretty outstanding game from you individually. I mean, not only on the mound, keeping Wellington down to three runs, but, I mean, hitting as well. And You were pretty much doing everything I thought you were going to catch there for a minute. Must have been a good feeling for you as well. Yeah, no, it was. It's, it's always good to win, but, um, you know, the whole team, you know, just can't, can't do it with one person. It was all of us, eh? I think what was good, though, Shree, was the, the, the runs you got on the board. I mean, the Pawaka sisters, I mean, your batting lineup from one to nine just got you the runs. And yeah. I know you contained them to three, but to get seven runs against Wellington must be a pretty good effort. Yeah, yeah it feels really good. And, and we've been training hard, eh, all the girls. And we, I think we deserved it. We played hard. This is what we've been here for. for this, this I, game. I can't disagree with that. Well done, Shree. Enjoy the night. Cheers. Thank you very much. Welcome to Rosedale Park in the North Harbour of Auckland for the final of the New Zealand Community Trust National League Men's Final and it will see Auckland, Tactics Auckland going up against Wellington and uh, the final this afternoon, Wellington power side, the batting side, they come into this game with an average of 308 which is in softball terms very high and they also have some players more than capable of putting the ball out of the ballpark. The Auckland batting order will see Dion Nukunuku followed by his brother Nathan and then the very much in form Donny Hale. So they have three Black Sox leading off the hitting. He won't look to put this ball anywhere near the zone one would think. Oh, he takes it with a third strike. So does what uh, you're not supposed to do. Good pitch though. And McLean went looking for it. And Martin does tee off on it down the right field line. Does it stay? It stayed in. So uh, Martin will take the stand-up double. Class player, Jared Martin. No two ways about it. Time. 
Dion. And perhaps a bad Dion, pitch. Quickly. Yeah, probably a bit of a mistake there, Mike, from, from Tommy Cameron. Two strikes up. He's put it down where Jerry Martin can get in. I think he tried to keep it out of the strike zone, but Martin went after it. And... Oof, jeez. I don't know whether you say a good call, but it's definitely a line call. And that ball. Cameron winds it up. And he went after it too. So good pitch, Tommy Cameron. And Thomas Markey goes back to the bench. So Wellington, after their first turn at bat, unable to score a run. And uh, they'll go out and field for the first time with the game tied up with all duck eggs. Rana's going to have to throw a pretty good pitch here. Caught a ball. So good batting, Nathan Nukunuku. First runner on the uh, the diamond for uh, Auckland this afternoon. Nathan Nukunuku picks up the walk. Very good patience, Mike. Nathan Nukunuku, he's, he's renowned for that. He, he's a good ball watcher and he'll only ever hit them if they're right in the middle of the strike zone. And very good patience, a good at bat from Nathan Nukunuku and it brings up probably their best hitter at the moment in Donnie Hale. So Jimmy One is going to have to be or tread carefully around Donny Hale. And this player, Donny Hale, if you can get a close up look at his bat at some point. Oh, hit behind the, the advancing shortstop, so Nooka Nook is going to stretch it down to three. Hale's going to stay back on first base, but good work, Donny Hale. The shortstop moved a little early. Nooka Nooka was going, and the result being he stretched it easy. I think Ricky Hurley's called a hit and run here, and Johnny Stratford, and that's what happens when you have Nathan Nukunuku. He's quick, he's going to go. So Johnny Stratford there, he's ready to, for the catcher to be thrown in the ball and caught out of position. If, if Johnny Stratford had stayed where he was, he would have picked up, would have been an easy a regulation out. But I've seen Ricky Hurley throwing a lot of signals here, but really, Tafai Marai, all he'll be thinking about is getting it into the space or over the fence, scoring these runs. He hits it down to the third base. They hold. He comes for the home play. And safe there, safe, scores. Safe. And safe at three, Donnie Hale as well. So Matai did the business. And Nathan Nukunuku gets across with the opening run of the game. Very good play from Nathan Nukunuku. Regulation infield hit. And it's just speed. Yeah, good enough speed. He backed himself. And he went for home. Very good base running from Nathan Nukunuku there. He he backed himself. Uh, yeah, too, yeah. He did, he, you know, he could have easily gone back to third base, but he thought, no. Nope. Took himself he right away. Rather enjoyed that, didn't he? Ooh, dead ball, dead ball, dead ball. And that was uh, a cool next to him. Tommy Cameron goes over and... Okay. I think he just Time's says... Out. Time's out. Time's out. Ball's dead. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, Mark here. And Stephen Ratu player who has played for the Black Sox. It's down the bunt. It's a lovely bunt too. O'Neill takes the, uh, the out of first across the nook and the and by Saunders. Wayne Saunders down there calls it. Down to right field. Takes a catch. Brilliant catch. Fantastic catch. And Carl Golan, that's a lovely catch out there in right field. Diving catch and he takes the uh, yeah, and here it comes again. Very, very hard for a right fielder. That's You can see it, banana bending away from him, and that's a fantastic play from Carl Golan. He so, threw everything at that. Carl Golan takes the out, retires the side, and Auckland will be more than happy with their second turn at bat. And the better hit is following them, so... Always causes a bit of problems for sides. Dobbly little hit. Stratford does well to field it, actually. And he just got a glove to it, held it. But uh, it's done the business. And it's a safe hit. Well, this is actually a Jimmy Wanner change-up. Um, Kurt Allen waited for it. And just waited for it enough. And just got enough bat on to get it over Stephen Rutherford's head. And as you said, John, Johnny Stratford actually did very well to get the ball into his gloves. But... Probably one of the uglier hits you'll see, but a hit nonetheless.
does his business, puts it out into right field. Deep. Bounces off the fence. They're going to score one, Auckland. Nukunuk is going to come round and stand up at third base. Great job, Dion Nukunuk. Did what he had to do. Well, he's been doing it for a long time, hasn't he, Nooks? And in situations like that, you, there's a few guys you'd have in there, but certainly Dion Nukunuk. Lovely little ball. Maybe just a wee bit misjudged by... Oh, I see. McLean out in right field, but lovely hit from Nooks and an easy walk in for Kurt Allen to score. And Dion Nukunuku gets himself on third base, so Wellington is still in a bit of trouble. But Auckland with two runs. Ratu takes the hot ball and takes the out. Lovely play. Stephen Ratu came to him pretty quickly and he did the business. So with two innings completed, it's Auckland in front of Wellington by two to nothing. The side trailing by two, so he's got a lot of work to do. Craig Wallace into the belt, batter's box. Good batting average of 316. And Tommy Cameron. is gone baby it's out of here wellington get one back with just one swing of the bat just like that no worries at all and it's uh, craig wallace who gets one back for wellington with a lovely swing of the bat smart thinking from craig wallace i think tommy cameron has worked with that he, he throws the strike first pitch this is first pitch and she got all of it it wasn't going anywhere bar over the fence. A lovely hit from Craig Wallace. And as I said, maybe he'd worked out Tommy Cameron's take throwing the pitch down first up. And boy, did he get on with it. back in the bar. No worries at all. Three lovely outs from the Auckland infield. Second base shortstop and then the third baseman, Tony Nui retires the Wellington side but they'll be more than happy with their uh, uh, third turn at bat Wellington they've got one back it's Auckland in front two to one oh great work great work Nemia he just put the ball Aaron Nemia he just picked the pitch and drilled it right up the middle she did almost decapitated Tommy Cameron there he came back at incredible speed there's a snatch from Tommy Cameron just a a grab and hope really but G hit that well and then Andrew giving the signals there'll be a key in there and a code as Stratford hits up the middle Nukunuku easy he makes those look easy he covers the territory There's not much of him but he's got arms six foot long easy out so Wellington after their fifth turn at bat they still trail it's Auckland tactics Auckland in front of Wellington Two to one, middle of the fifth innings. Matai comes out to shortstop Stratford. Long throw to make, and Matai beats the throw. For a man who's been carrying an injury for much of the season, he's done well. As O'Neill drills it to centre field. Banner concedes the hit. Scott O'Neill just keeps his batting average of his just rolling right along. Time. Goodness me. Time. Standing for him. Andrew hits up the middle. They're going to score a run away open. The plate comes at home. Scores it. Good work, Lyndon Andrew. He gets that run. Gets that insurance policy. She's lovely here. Hit from Lynn and Andrew and Travis Allen didn't seem to get around the bases very quick. I thought he was going to be easily safe and I, so, I think so did Aaron Nemia because really if you have a look here Aaron Nemia could have had a play on Travis Allen there. Oh that was the reason. Two strikes and a ball. Jimmy Weiner in front of the hitter. Golan takes it into right left field he's going to score one going to score two he's going to stretch it to three and that's a great hit Carl Golan his ball game two great catches 
And now two RBIs. And the thing is, Mike, he went after this pitch. Jimmy Seaman had kept it out of the zone. He was two strikes up, put it up a bit high, and Carl Gollan chased it. That's a fantastic hit. Because that ball was well out of the strike zone. And he's got as much of it as he can possibly get and a beautiful hit. And then, then to have the wheels to get around the third, it's very, very good base running. The two runners were in pretty safely, but then Carl Gollan made the effort to get himself to third to put himself in a very good scoring position. For a start. Good strike out from uh, Jimmy Wana. Good comeback. But now his batters are going to have to do the business because the Auckland side have ended the fifth innings, leading by five runs to one. Wouldn't want to get a player of this quality out there with the power that comes in behind it. Put it in the middle, and so did Mark. He just tapped it through behind Shannon, down the side, over second base, and takes his second into the game. And you've got to wonder, it's a, it's a bit of a mistake from behind Shannon, isn't it? You were just saying two strikes up, he didn't need to come into the zone, he didn't need to put it where Jared Martin could hit it. Just needed to work a wee bit around it, I mean... It's, it was a hopeless cause for Nathan Nookin, but he did not give up. <laughs> Bit like Peter Ballas coming after the draw ball. Oh, Fabian Markier will pop that in short left field, and they'll score a run, Wellington. So Fabian Markier, he gets one back for Wellington. Michael Cameron comes home, the designated runner. And Fabian Markier, the little bloopy hit. Texas Liga into short left field. You get the feeling that Michael Cameron wouldn't have scored if it wasn't two out, but because it's two out, he's not going to be able to be tagged out and he can go straight away. So you see him, he won't hold up at all. He knows it's two out. Hence the reason he was able to get home with the ball just dropping in between uh, Nuka Nuka and Hale there. Cameron warming up again. I notice in the bullpen. Ratu, another one. Pops it into short left field. Marky is going to come for home. No play at a home plate, so uh, five to three. All of a sudden, scores the, runner the tying top. run is at the plate. Yeah, they haven't been massive hits from Wellington, but they've been effective. They've got them into the left field area. And good running from Fabian Markier there. He was determined to get himself home. And as you say now, Mike, the, the leading man, one hit, we're, we're a tied ball game. So maybe. Piney Shannon's got to get a wee bit of control back here. I know it's been unfortunate the hits haven't been great, but he's been putting the ball in there. That's twice now he's had two strikes on a batter that they've, that they've been able to get hits on it. You've got to try and be smart and get away from the strike zone once you're two strikes up. Good work from Heine Shannon. He had to come from behind in the sense of he had considered those couple of runs, but he got out of the innings okay. At the end of the day, he'll be more than happy. Auckland is still in front, five to three. Auckland uh, puts the ball into play. Wallace makes the play. Ooh, lobs it across. And run down. No, everyone goes and advances safely. One is on two and three. Dave Gollan. Well, that makes a difference, Donny Hale. That's going to score two. The Nuku Nukus are coming home. And that's two more back. So, a little captain's knock from Donny Hale. Pretty disappointed with himself, I think, after that previous pitch. And showed a lot more discipline on that one. Got a wonder, Mike, because once again, David Gollum was two strikes up. And, and on a man like Donny Hale, he's going to get back to the ball. Drills it to centre field, and Thomas Markier eats it up in centre field. No worries at all. So, Wellington will come out to bat, knowing that they've got a heck of a lot of work to do. They're going to have one more shot at it. They trail Auckland by seven runs to three as we go into the seventh innings. Showed the umpire is back for a couple of seconds there. I don't think he's happy with the call, but... Right, Stratford. We're going to keep the game alive. Drills it. Shannon takes it easy. 
and Heine Shannon and young Thomas Cameron have done the job on the pitching mound. The all-star batting lineup behind them has certainly delivered the goods this afternoon. Auckland convincingly having beaten Wellington by seven runs to three. Yeah, Tommy, well, national champions again. Good feeling, five really well pitched innings, mate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. You uh, get seven runs on the board. You know, it makes your uh, game a lot easier. It's went, went around it the, the wrong way, I suppose, losing to Canterbury yesterday, but came through this morning. You pitched well this morning. You must have been confident coming in against Wellington in the final. Well, we got into a good rhythm and uh, just carried it on through to the final. I think uh, last yesterday was a bit of a wake-up call for us. And uh, it was, I don't know, it was pretty good for us, that, that loss. I guess um, you're keeping an eye on an injury up in the, the Black Sox in the World Series. I think you made a pretty much a statement. You're thinking about it, you know, maybe that if there's an injury there that you could look at getting yourself in the, in the squad? The whole season I've been thinking about it, just keeping fit and just do what you do. So. Well, mate, you made a pretty big statement today, Tommy. Go and enjoy it with the boys. Well done. Cheers, bro. Yeah, here I am with Ricky Early. Well, Ricky, back-to-back -back championships must be a good feeling, mate. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, nice for this team. They're a, uh, a special sort of a team. Very um, hard to motivate. They, they sort of do things their own sort of way. Um, I've given up renting and raving. They just seem to come out and do the job. And um, amazingly, in the last two years, we've never lost a game on a Sunday. So I'm just, just happy they keep the finals on a Sunday. Mate, knowing you the way I know you, there would have been a fair bit of ranting and raving last night after the Canterbury match. You, you couldn't have been too happy. And... In a way, I guess it worked out better for you today that you had the back-to-back -back games. Yeah, it did. It, the, way the, the way the draw set up, it just um, it, it made it easy for us. It means um, we only had to play a maximum of two games, which uh, did our pitch as well. And um, you know, our two pitchers, Thomas and Heine, just did a fantastic job today. And the hitters as well. I mean, you just seemed to get... Scotty O'Neill was absolute, on absolute fire. I mean, he was coming in 400 or just over 400. Three hits and a, and a walk today. You can't ask for more in a final. Yeah, he's just been on fire the whole whole series, as you say. And um, I think last night really um, shook our hitters up. You know, we're up by four runs, and all of a sudden we gave up eight against Canterbury, and we lose. So today, you know, we're up four or five. They just kept on coming, kept on coming. You know, we just were ruthless today. Now taking your Auckland hat off and, and looking at there was a few Black Sox on display today. Looking in good form for the World Series, you think? Yeah, I think they are. They've got, I've got a little bit of an issue with pitching. Um, you know, Jimmy's hurting a little bit, and uh, Mike Gage is hurting a bit, but he's just coming back into work so he's going to be doing a little bit in the NPC and Marty so I, I think come come World Series time once they get all together they'll be right. Looking at the hitters I mean Thomas Markey came in the match 500 you know batting, uh, batting average and Donny Hale was over the 400 and guys like that they've got to take some confidence going into into a World Series don't they with, with figures like that behind them. I think um, they'll, they'll take the sort of attitude that um, we're going to get some runs scored against us, but boy, we're going to score some, you know. And um, you know, the, the hitters just going to be catchers if you can. You know, they're going to post some numbers, and it's up to the other team to get some. Just um, talking to Thomas Cameron after the match. I mean, trying to get blood out of a stone to my cousin, but um, injuries, injuries in the pitching realms. I mean, if they, they do get injuries, you know, they seriously got to look at Tommy Cameron, don't they? I think I think they do. Yeah, um, you know, there's, there's a few guys that were just on the crust of making the team, and. Uh, and Tommy was one of them, and, and he's obviously been told by Don, you just keep going about your work, and should something happen, you know, you'll be ready. And, and that's Tommy's attitude all through, and he's, he's looking to improve. Uh, he certainly set himself for the next World Series, but um, if an opportunity arises, I think he's, he's more than ready. Well, congratulations, mate. I'm sure there's going to be a couple of beers drunk tonight with the Auckland team. Well done. Yeah, cheers, Harry. <laughs>